The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining today's Lunch and Learn with Integrity Data. My name is Allie Phillips, and I'm in sales and marketing here at the TM Group, and I'll be your host. Presenting today, we have Dan Doolin, who is a senior account representative over at Integrity Data. So a huge thanks to them and him today for presenting. A couple of things to go over before we get started. If you have any questions at all, please type them in the questions or chat box located on the right-hand side of your screen. And also, this is being recorded, um, so if you have any further questions in the future, feel free to shoot an email over to me, and I'll be able to answer them then. And with that being said, I will transfer things over to you, Dan. Awesome. Thank you, Allie. And thanks, everyone, for joining or watching the recording. Uh, today, we're going to talk about managing uh, the Michigan Paid Medical Leave Act within Dynamics GP. As you know, this is a, uh, a new law, went into effect at the end of March, uh, and it impacts most employers in, in the state of Michigan. So we're going to talk through uh, that whole situation and how to comply with that if you're using Dynamics GP and using payroll within Dynamics GP. All right, so let's take a look at our agenda for our webinar today. First, we're going to do a quick welcome and introduction. Uh, we're going to talk generally about the trends and mandated paid sick leave. Uh, we will also talk specifics on the new Michigan Paid Medical Leave Act. We're going to talk about how to comply with that using the Comprehensive Leave Manager product from Integrity Data within Dynamics GP. In the slide deck uh, that you'll also receive as a follow-up, I also have listed several other accrual options that are available within Dynamics GP and several details about those. Most of those are not suitable for managing uh, legislated or mandated paid sick leave, such as the case in Michigan. Uh, but anyway, wanted to include that information as well in case you're evaluating those. Also at the end, as Allie mentioned, you have questions. We'll be happy to answer those. So go ahead and put those into the question and answer box on the GoToWebinar or chat them to us as well. All right, let's jump into things here. Welcome and, and introduction. If you're not familiar with Integrity Data, uh, we've been around for a while. Uh, we've been around since 1996 as an organization, been providing solutions into the Dynamics GP customer base since 2000. Uh, I remember working with TM Group early in those days, uh, working with Judy and Ken and Kim and the rest of the crew up there. Uh, I can remember coming up there as early as 2004, which is hard to believe that's 15 years ago. Anyway, uh, been in the Dynamics GP space a long time, always focusing on reliable software, expert services. Expert services meaning they don't just know about our software, but they know about the why behind it and what's really driving the use of that software from your perspective. And of course, top-notch support. You may well be using uh, some of our software already. We have an OEM licensing agreement with Microsoft, so there's some key features in the payroll module of Dynamics GP that are included in that as part of that licensing agreement, as well as the HR payroll extended pack which includes the four features you see on the screen. And we're gonna talk about one of those a little bit at the end with PTO Manager. All right, mandated sick time trends. This is um, something that's becoming very popular across the country. Of course, it started uh, in the Northwest and uh, through California, and then on the other coast, now it's kind of working its way towards the center of the country. Obviously, here in the state of Michigan, uh, some laws in Illinois, uh, Minneapolis. And essentially what this is, is requiring employers to accrue paid sick time for all employees. Trad traditionally, paid time off has been a benefit for full-time employees. And uh, the nature of these laws are that, well, part-time employees get sick too and shouldn't have to be punished or be unpaid for that time off that they have, either for themselves or their families. Uh, to have that time off. And so requiring employers to pay employees or to accrue time for employees to have available uh, in case they or the employee is sick or their family member is sick. All right, we're not gonna go through all of these bullet points because we're gonna talk about them as it relates to Michigan specifically. In a lot of cases, all these laws follow the same pattern uh, somewhere between or, or an hour, each law requires that the employer provide one hour of sick time for somewhere between 30 and 40 hours worked. In Michigan, as you'll see, it's 35. Um, it's geographically based on where the employee is working. There's a waiting period. Um, typically applies to all employees. Um, 
in some cases doesn't apply to all employers, but it's certainly becoming more and more common across the country. And so what this does uh, from a mindset and a organizational risk point of view is say, okay, well now sick time isn't necessarily a benefit that the employer is offering. It's now a compliance effort that the employer must do to stay compliant. Now you're at risk of a lawsuit from an employee um, or a, you know, a, a inquiry from the State Department of Labor, anything like that as it relates to sick time. So it's obviously important that you do it. It's in your best interest, of course, to do it efficiently to manage this time so that you're not spending a lot of time and extra money with the administrative tasks associated with it in addition to the extra money that's already costing the organization to provide this paid time off. All right, Michigan Paid Medical Leave Act, effective March 29th, 2019, which was about two weeks ago. So if you're not compliant yet, obviously this should be pretty high on your uh, priority list. So let's talk about the key points of the Michigan law. And in a couple of slides, you'll see some resources, some links that you can utilize to get more information also. I've tried to summarize it as best as I can here. It's effective March 29th, 2019. Uh, applies to businesses with 50 or more employees. And that's based on pure headcount. Uh, from what I've read, it's not based on you know FTEs or anything like that. Uh, the accrual begins on the first day of employment, uh, but you can use a 90-day waiting period uh, before the employee can use that. So what that means is that um, the employee begins accruing the time right away, but um, you can sort of shield the organization or shield that from the employee until that 90-day mark. And then you'll start showing it on the pay stub. Then the employee can use the time and show that time is available to the employee. All right, the key factor here is that you can accrue, uh, the employee accrues one hour of sick time for every 35 hours worked. Okay, so that's a payroll function, looking at hours worked. Uh, and what we're gonna do is show you how to do that uh, automatically and have that fully automated. Uh, the employee can accrue up to 40 hours in a calendar year. Employees can carry over 40 hours from one year to the next, so that's a, a carryover limit. If the employee has more than 40 hours, uh, we want to trim that back so that we're not carrying um, that extra time out there. Now you do have the option to provide all 40 hours at the beginning of the year. So rather than doing the accrual of the one hour for every 35 hours that the employee works throughout the year, you could just front load that at the beginning of the year and say, all right, we're just going to give them all 40. So that might sound easier, which it is, but the risk is that you might be giving employees more paid sick time, more paid really unproductive time than what you need to. So you really have to look at your employee population to say, well, are these uh, employees going to earn 40 hours in a year or not? And what do you what do you want to do with that? Um, some organization that might make organizations that might make sense to front load it. Other organizations that might be more cost effective to get to give the accrual and to do it that way because ultimately you're not gonna provide 40 hours to those employees, you're gonna provide much less than that. So it's kind of a, a cost calculation for yourself to determine which approach would work the best. All right, there are some exemptions to the Michigan, Michigan Paid Medical Leave Act. Um, first of all, if you have less than 50 employees, you don't have to worry about it. That's kind of nice if you're in that category. Um, employees that offer a paid time off or a PTO plan, typically a PTO plan, is gonna be a combination of vacation, sick, and whatever else, all in one bucket. Here you go, employee, you take it off however you need to, or however, however you want to. But as long as that exceeds 40 hours for the year, then that, if you're offering that to your employees already, that's, being, that's considered compliant with the Paid Medical Leave Act. Now, that has to be for all employees, not just um, full-time employees. So typically the paid time off plan is for full-time employees, so you gotta be careful with that one. Exempt employees, now this is an interesting one. This isn't one that you see in, in um, most other states. These are some unique exemptions uh, for Michigan. Exempt employees are exempt from this act. So if you stop and think about that for a second, like, oh wow, that's kinda nice, but is it really that big of an exemption? Because typically exempt or salary employees are full-time, they're already getting the, the paid time off as a benefit, so it's not really filling that big of a gap, I guess you would say. 
Seasonal employees who work less than 25 weeks in a calendar year, they're exempt. Uh, employees covered by a collective bargaining agreement or union employees, they are exempt. I'm not sure where this came from, but flight deck, cabin crew, and railroad workers are also exempt from the uh, from the plans. Usually, uh, those employees, I guess, are in a collective bargaining agreement anyway. So again, what's the net uh, exemption there may not be that much. Now, this next one is interesting. Employees that average less than 25 hours per week in the previous year. Now, we've worked with some employers on this, and typically, you could use um, like a smart list function or a, you know a, a report to to find out who those employees are to enroll them or not enroll them in the next year. Typically, that's going to be a pretty uh, clear line, so you can choose to enroll some employees in the plan or not others. You got to be careful with that. If you've got a lot of employees that are close, you might just want to enroll them in the plan anyway, just to protect yourself uh, from any future inquiries or litigation. So it's up to you to decide on which employees should be should be enrolled in that. All right, some resources. I'm just really gonna leave this here. You'll get this on the slide deck. Uh, Michigan Chamber of Commerce, uh, they probably had the best uh, resource set. Uh, National Law Review is good, um, and, and you can see the others as well. So uh, those will be made available to you when you, we send you the slide deck as a follow-up. Right, let's talk about how to administer this within Dynamics GP. So I'm gonna jump over to do a quick demonstration. Um, there are other ways to accrue time in Dynamics GP, and those are listed a little bit later, but they all have limitations as it relates to sick time. And I get into a lot of conversations with uh, employers using Dynamics GP, and they'll say, well, can I use this, or can I use the PTO manager piece, or what should I use? And when you get to the compliance effort related to uh, the paid medical leave or the the, the uh, mandated paid sick time, the comprehensive leave manager solution, which is a solution that Integrity Data provides, ultimately is the best way to do that. The reason for that is when California came on board in 2015 with some pretty unique requirements, we built the infrastructure in place with the product uh, to be able to accommodate that. Certainly you could use a spreadsheet, certainly you could do it as a hand calculation, anything like that. But there's, there's issues with doing all that simply because um, you don't have a good backup of that data. Um, it's not very um, auditable if you would have an inquiry or, or any litigation associated with that and so on. And so we talk about those later in the slide deck. We probably won't spend a lot of time on those, but we did make that information available for you to review. All right, let me jump over to the demonstration here. And I'm in Dynamics GP uh, that we all know and love. So uh, I've got the Comprehensive Leave Manager product installed here. Let me just jump over. I'm going to go through a few screens just to show you how easy this is. So I've, if I click on Leave Setup, now within the Comprehensive Leave Manager, you can track all different types of leave for employees, vacation, PTO, bereavement, personal days, and uh, we have a lot of employers that are using it to track not just one sick time balance for an employee, but multiple sick time balance, balances for employees in states like California where they've got just all kinds of local and state mandates related to this legislated sick time. So let's take a quick look here and we'll just walk through this pretty quickly. So I've got Michigan sick time as I've called it, okay? So I've got the leave code, the description, it's an accrual type. Um, I've got an accrual schedule. When we drill down into that, the accrual schedule is the heart of the calculation for any type of leave that you're tracking within Dynamics GP. So as we look at this, you can see that we've got this set to be for every X hours per calendar year. There's many other options here that we use for other types of leave, for example, years worked and so on. So for every X hours per calendar year, now all I have to do, and I've got the maximum of 40 there, all I have to do is type in the increment below. It's 35 hours in the state of Michigan. So for every 35 hours that an employee works, they get one hour of sick time. And you're done. Okay, that's very simple and straightforward to set up and configure. Uh, we'll have some screenshots of this on the slide deck uh, when you get that, so it'll it'll be even easier. Right now, as we move through the setup, now this is just at the setup level. It's not assigned to an employee yet. The accrual is based on the hire date. Okay, we've got the effective date here, so that's when it begins. We've got a 90-day one-time waiting period, which means 
uh, if we hire an employee today, they're going to start accruing today. Um, that time will not show up on the employee's pay stub until they cross that 90-day mark. And then, as you guessed it, they may well be sick at that point because they'll have some sick time to take. The maximum is 40 hours. That's a cap on the balance for the employee. Okay, so that checks it every time. Make sure they never go over 40 hours. Over on the right, we've got the carryover at the year end, calendar year end to make sure that the employee doesn't take more than 40 hours into the next year. If they're never sick, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, we, we, you know, like to have employees that don't take advantage of that. They're healthy and they're not sick and they're productive all the time, but we want to let them carry that time into the, into the next year also. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have the earned pay codes. Those are hours, let me rephrase that, those are transactions that the system will look at for these pay codes to look at the hours to determine or to calculate if the employee has crossed a 35-hour increment. So for example, if you want to include sick time there, you can. If you want to make sure that if you have any shift differentials or anything like that that might overstate the hours or duplicate the hours for an employee, you want to make sure that you leave those out. The flexibility and the nice part about this is that you have control over which hours go towards that 35-hour increment and which hours do not. On the right-hand side of the screen, we have the pay codes that you use as you're recording a payroll transaction or as the employee is entering time to indicate that they want to utilize some of this sick time. Now, you'll notice I've got two here. I've got the PTO and the sick pay uh, pay codes. So if either of those are, are entered, then that time will be removed from this balance. All right, let's take a look at an employee-specific example. So I'm going to go to employee leave. Okay, I'm going to pull up my sample employee here and put in the uh, Michigan sick time. Okay, so I've got, I've got an accrual in process. That's fine. So we've got the Michigan sick time. Uh, when was it last accrued through? It's been accrued through 414. Based on the hire date, it was effective on 328, 2019. Everything else is the same, but you'll notice if I would need to make a change which at the employee level, which you typically wouldn't do in this case because it's pretty well set. Uh, and on PTO and, and some of those other things, sometimes you have exceptions to the rule at the employee level that you need to change. Otherwise, in this case, these sick plans are typically going to follow the setup for an employee. You're not going to have any employee-specific situations. All right, up in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that uh, the current balance is 14 hours for the employee, and we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that. There are a few ways to assign this to the employee. As you can see, I can do it right here in the employee leave window. There's also a employee, I'm sorry, or a, a leave uh, mass enrollment type of tool where you can, if you were implementing this and you needed to assign it to a large group of employees, um, you can do that. You can also do a quick assignment to the employee if they are uh, a new employee, you're trying to process payroll to include that new employee, and you, and you want to quickly get that employee enrolled into this plan and or potentially other plans that you're providing to the employees. All right, so now all you have to do once you have it set up is process payroll in Dynamics GP. No additional steps, uh, no additional time. It just calculates based on the payroll data and the setup that you've got and increments that time for the employees. And we'll put that time on their pay stub. There's a few different options for putting it on the pay stub. You can put the year-to-date amounts, you can put the balance amount, you can put the per pay period amount, whatever you'd like to do, uh, you have the flexibility to do that. In addition, if you're using a tool like a, an employee portal, uh, then that time can typically may, be made available on that employee portal also. Let's dig in a little bit deeper on the employee leave summary. So again, I'm going to pick my employee, Adam Barr. We've got the leave summary. As you can see here, he's got the PTO plan. He's got an other mandated paid sick time, but he's also got Michigan sick time as well. What's nice about this is from your perspective, as you look at this, if the employee comes to you with a question like, hey, you know, why is my balance 14 hours? Then you can dig into this a little bit. So you can see that the employee in this calendar year has earned six hours. They've taken eight hours. There's been some adjustments. Was there's a minus eight hours, which added to that. Uh, so it gave him a total of 14 hours. So this is an example of where uh, we did an adjustment 
and put some time back. So it was recorded incorrectly and then we put it back into the balance for the employee. So let's take a, so what we can do also is double click into that to get the detail, all right? So in this case, the employee accrued two hours. This taken is a negative transaction entry. So it's not, the employee didn't take eight hours, otherwise it would be a, a positive eight hours. Um, it was a correction, so we put eight hours back for the employee. That's why the balance goes from two to 10 and then the employee continues to earn there as well. So what's nice about this is that when the employee comes to you and says, hey, I have a question about my balance, I don't think this is right, whether it's PTO, vacation, bereavement, personal days, or Michigan sick time, you have an audit trail that gets recorded automatically within the payroll system using the Comprehensive Leave Manager that's tracking all of this for you. So you can say, well, uh, Mr. Employee, here's all of your information and here's your audit uh, trail for Michigan time. I can even print this for you and hand it to you and be on your way. So you've got the full capability to support that. If we look at a little bit different example here on the PTO, uh, converted balance, um, again, accrued, 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 another adjustment back into the balance for the employee and so on. So you've got that detail. If you need to make any adjustments. You've got the manual transaction capability to create an adjustment, transfer the time, um, adjust the balance uh, for PTO and things like that. You can create, initiate the payout and so on. So you've got everything you need all in one place, all in Dynamics GP, fully automated, hands off, fully compliant and on your way. All right, again, if you have any questions, feel free to put those under the question box. Uh, we'll head back into the PowerPoint now and run through a few additional slides. All right, other accrual options, and I'm not going to go through all of these. I just want to mention them, and the reason that I kept this information in is because it's very detailed in, in the slides. So the other accrual options include Microsoft Excel, Dynamics GP, payroll accruals, PT, uh, HR attendance, and the PTO manager. Uh, the PTO manager, uh, since this was originally in, or still is Integrity Data Intellectual Property made available through a licensing agreement, you will see some relationship in the naming conventions between PTO manager and Comprehensive Leave Manager. And as we've mentioned before, Comprehensive Leave Manager is certainly more robust and more suited for managing mandate, mandated or legislated sick time um, really in, in any of the states or local municipalities that are that are mandating that. Right, so then uh, just some quick slides. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of these. Uh, you can certainly review these as you see fit. Okay, some other key benefits related to the Comprehensive Leave Manager that we've talked about. And some details. So I wanted to leave this in here just so you have it. And I'm gonna add a couple of screenshots to this uh, before we send it to you. Um, but just so you have it all in one place. Um, be a great resource for you as you evaluate how to be compliant uh, with the Michigan Paid Medical Leave Act. All right, if you have additional questions, you can visit integrity-data.com slash solve-leave. On our website, we also have um, additional tools like blog posts. We have, uh, if you search for mandated sick leave on our website, you'll find a plethora of resources and videos and webinars and things like that that we've done to help uh, employers across the country stay compliant with these things. Uh, you can read customer stories, watch videos, download documentation, knowledge base articles. You can have all kinds of fun. All right, any questions? Thanks, Dan, for a great presentation. Um, we don't have any questions as of right now, but do you have any frequently asked questions that you'd like to answer in case people are still typing? Yeah, but I think a lot of questions uh, that come up are uh, usually the first question is, um, can you get the time onto the pay stub? Because that's important. And it's usually a factor of the legislation to be compliant. Uh, the answer is yes, of course, um, with the Comprehensive Leave Manager solution, you can get those the details of that time onto the pay stub or direct deposit earning statement for the employee. Um, other common questions that come up are, um, we've missed the go live or the effective date of the law, can we catch it up? 
So if, if we implement it now, can we go back and from March 28th and catch up the time for the employees? And the answer to that is typically you can. In most cases you can, especially with the way that uh, the comprehensive leave manager functions and the nature of the law associated with uh, the sick time. Those are probably the two most common questions that come up. Great, thank you, Dan. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment, but like I said, this was being recorded and it will be sent to all of you. So if questions do arise, then feel free to reach out to myself or Dan. All this information is up on the screen there um, about any questions that you may have in the future. So thank you everyone for taking time out of your day and thank you, Dan, a bunch for presenting today. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.